Welcome, Chris here from Videomaker and you're watching our review of the Light in Motion Stella 2000. The Light in Motion Stella 2000 is this little compact light right here. It runs off a lithium ion battery. It has a chip on board LED and well, it gets really bright. In fact, it'll do 2000 lumens all the way down to 300 lumens and well, depending on what power usage you use, the battery will last between 50 and 415 minutes. So it can last a long time or you can burn it up real quick. Uh, now it operates at 5000 K and well, it has quite a few different modifiers you can get for it as well as quite a few different mounting options. So let's go over those modifiers. So it comes with barn doors and this 50 degree angle um, lens here and uh, it just pushes right on and no big deal. Now you have barn doors that you can do stuff with. Um, it's got optional, so it's got an optional modifier kit that comes with a Fresnel. So that makes it a 25 degree uh, beam angle. And then it's got this glow bulb, which really is just all diffused and gives you just a, a real portable soft box. Uh, and then lastly, it has this three inch um, gel mount that you can put different gels or what, what have you on it. Um, now the mounting, right now we have the C-stand mount on it, but it also has a mount for um, quarter 20 as well, which you just unscrew this and put it on there. And now you can mount it on quarter 20. When you have the quarter 20 on, you now have a cold shoe mount. It can be swapped out with this little Allen wrench screw here for a pistol grip so you can actually hold it. And we actually found that that was very useful because mounted on the actual camera, it was so bright that if you're shooting, say an interview, it was quite blinding. So as well, you can also get this, this stand uh, mount, this pole mount. Now, the one issue we had with this is if you're mounting on a, on a pole like this, well, the light would actually sag and go down. So you actually have to be on a bar. So you have to be upright like that and then it would be fine. That was the only drawback of that mount there. Now it comes with the AC adapter here, which you can actually switch out to make it so it runs off of your cigarette lighter or what have you um, and different options. And then of course there's different standards for the plug depending on what area of the world you're in. And this is of course the US uh, version. So, uh, but it comes with the other one, so you're good to go. Um, now, we were really curious of what these modifiers would do. So let's take a look at the modifiers, which is gonna be the glow bulb and the Fresnel, and then with no um, modifier at all, which is 120 degree uh, beam angle. And let's take a look at really what those lights look like. Let's take a look. Now there's not any conclusive information from there other than you can just see the quality of light that the modifiers offer. Now we wanted to do it one more time with all four uh, modifiers on it. And what we wanted to do is show you the intensity that the beam angles create. So this is a shot of me and it's using the Fresnel, the uh, glow bulb, the no modifier, and then as well the uh, 50 degree optic uh, lens with the barn doors. So let's take a look at that. quite intense there when it comes to the Fresnel and the optic, the, the 50 degree optic lens there. So might not be the best usage for maybe, you know, a person or what have you, but for a highlight light or a rim light or what have you, well, that's going to be really nice. It makes them a hard light. And whereas the um, glow bulb is bright, but we actually noticed in a lot of situations, it wasn't quite bright enough. So it diffused a little too much. So actually what we found was the best use was just no modifier at all. However, it is super bright. In fact, it actually has a warning on it that says uh, eye hazard intense light. And I have flashed myself a few times with it. And I'll tell you what, it gives you a big old black spot in your eyes for a little while until you can recover. So kind of like looking in the sun, I wouldn't recommend it, don't do it. What we experienced, so we shot at NAB, we come into lots of different shooting situations from booths that are really large that they control all the light and they're really dark to ones that are near windows or 
lighting companies that have lots of lights and, and lots of light uh, to shoot with. So the spectrum was great and it was really nice to have a little portable light that we could pop on and turn on. Now it was great when we were shooting products and other things like that because really it doesn't matter how much light you're throwing at it as long as it's the right quality and you know you're not adding too many shadows or what have you. But when we were doing interviews we found that uh, we had to give it to somebody to have it off the camera because as bright as we wanted it we didn't want you to go and look into the camera and well get flashed and it definitely will do that to you. Uh, so the glow bulb actually makes it tolerable to look at but if you're any distance away it might not be quite enough light which is pretty crazy being that this bright this light is very very bright. So we, we found it was really nice. Now, 50 minutes was um, a little bit of an issue because, well, we were shooting all day long and so it didn't necessarily last all the time. We were turning it off every time we possibly could and uh, just not letting it run. Um, but the nice thing is, is in about two hours, the battery will be charged completely. Now it actually has some lights on the top of it that actually will tell you how much time left you have on the battery as far as percentage wise. And so that's pretty nice. You can lock it on, lock it off, and then you can also turn the knob here and make it so it can't be turned on and off because when you're handling it, it actually is pretty easy to turn on with this little switch here. So overall, it was very nice to use out in the field. So now let's talk about the big two things that this light offers that is quite unique from the rest of the really lighting world is one, they say you can drop this multiple times on cement from a meter, which is what, 3.3 feet. And well, we dropped it a little bit lower than that. And let's take a look at that footage. And uh, well, when we come back, we'll talk about what happened. So that was pretty neat, right? Uh, being able to drop a light and have it work after you're done dropping it, well, that's pretty cool. Now, uh, we must say that uh, Light in Motion let us know that you shouldn't be testing or trying to drop the light while the light is on. However, they will cover it under warranty if you do and it stops working. But, uh, you know, the only thing we could think of is really, you're not gonna intentionally drop this. So having the choice, whether it's on or off, well, that's not really, all that practical, you're not gonna know when you're gonna have it on or off or when you're gonna drop it. So, uh, you know, if you do drop it and it's on and it stops working, they'll replace it for you, but you'll be out of a light in the meantime. So that's one little thing, but you know, you can drop it from three feet and uh, you know, it'll keep on working. So that's pretty cool, very uh, robust. And it, it, you know, it, it is very, you know, sturdily built. It, it's, it, it feels heavy in the hand and uh, you know, the way it's built is very, very solid. So that's very cool. So next we're going to take a look at its underwater performance. So let's take a look at it working underwater. So what other light do you know that can go underwater up to 100 meters, that's 330 feet, and still work? That is quite incredible. Now we weren't able to go, you know, deep sea diving or anything. We just went to this creek down uh, by the video maker headquarters here and just put it under the water and tested it, make sure it's light. But it was quite bright under the water. Uh, we put a GoPro down there with it and we went from shooting um, a branch that was underwater and then uh, illuminated it with the light and it was quite a significant amount of light even through the sediment of the water, uh, which there was quite a bit of floating around. So that was really impressive. We got it out of the water and uh, after drying it off, it was working just fine so that was really quite fantastic um, and you know a really cool feature especially considering the cost so let's get into who's this for who's it not for what's its value in the marketplace and what do we recommend so who's this for well if you need a portable light and you need uh, it to be battery powered, you need it to be bright, well, your ENG shooters, your on-the-go shooters, your new shooters, all those people are gonna really benefit from this light. However, we did notice that, well, the best use was without any modifier and it's quite blinding. So if you're doing interviews, so you're doing news type shooting or any kind of interviews and you're trying to use this as your primary light, well, it's gonna be quite blinding. So that was a little bit of an issue. We actually had to, while shooting an AB, have it off the camera and uh, shoot at a different angle so it wasn't blinding our subject. 
project. Um, so that all said, was it a, a great light overall? Absolutely, would we recommend it? Yes, if you don't need the underwater uh, ability or the ability to drop, so say you're not a klutz and you don't drop your equipment, and maybe you handle it with care as you probably should with any piece of gear, no matter if it should handle a drop or not, well, those are not added value, but actually cost something for this light. If you got this light, uh, although they don't offer a non-waterproof, non-drop resistant uh, light, but if you did, it probably would be a, a little bit less cost because really $850 for this light is on the high side. But if you do need the underwater ability, if you do need a rugged light that can be dropped, well, it is a good value for that, but it is on the high end. So if you don't need those things, you are paying a premium for that. So who's it not for? Well, if you, if you need a, a powerful soft light and you're hoping this is gonna be the end all, well, you're probably gonna need some other kind of light, but it is a good light if this is the only light you have and you're needing to supplement uh, you know, some dark area with it. Um, with the Fresnel, it's really nice, a little highlight light. We most definitely could see using it for products or as you know, a rim light or what have you. That's really nice. And then with the barn doors, it's nice because you can control it. And it's not as intense as the uh, Fresnel with the 50 degree optic lens there on it. So overall, we liked it. It was a great lens. It performed really nice. The quality of the light was really good. Uh, we most definitely would recommend it. If you are looking in this uh, category, you're looking for a light that's going to be small, easy, compact, uh, have a lot of um, intensity and really be a nice quality light. Well, this is the one for you. Uh, and of course you can put it underwater and drop it if you so need. So there you have it. That's our review of the Light in Motion Stella 2000. If you'd like to buy this light, well, there'll be a link in the description. You can go ahead and click on that and buy it and help support us make videos like these. As well, we'll have a link to the modifier kit and to the mounting kit. If you like this shirt, well, you can buy it too. There'll be a link for it as well. As always, like, share, and comment. We want to know what you think. I've been Chris for Video Maker, and until next time, keep doing the hard work that you do. Bye-bye.